welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. So, uh, we only have a few more days in Zagreb, Croatia. We're moving on. Our book is getting ready to launch. I will put that in the description box. But that's not the subject of today's video. Today we are talking about Portuguese red wines. Now, <clears throat> Portugal is a very interesting country. A lot of uh, wine experts are actually touting it as the new Italy because it's really starting to come into uh, the world's mind consciously, even though they've making, been making wine for a long time. And there's tons of indigenous grape varieties there. And I have a selection here of seven interesting red wines. Unfortunately, Shireen and I are not uh, in are not tasting a tons of wines in Portugal as part of the industry where you're tasting, you know, 50 so wines a day. But we do try to taste Portuguese wines whenever we can because we find the wines to be quite exciting. So before we uh, get into the wines, I want to say thank you to the Wine Key Bar. We did kind of a trade. We traded 12 bottles of Croatian wine for 12 bottles of Portuguese wine. And these are the reds that they've sent me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these. One of these is, <coughs> excuse me, one of Shireen's favorite. This is the Valle de Popa Duro Old Vines from 2013. Now, funny story, the, way, the, the reason this was Shireen's favorite is it used to be called Crooked Vines, which was a cool name, because this is made from a field blend of 10 uh, indigenous grapes from the Duro. Old, old, old vines aged in oak. Uh, always good. We've had several vintages of this wine. The Duro's making wines, you know, they've been known for making uh, port wines, fortified sweet wines, but now there's real, really a movement to make high quality dry wines, and this one doesn't disappoint. Typical Duro flavors for me, rich extracted red fruit, some earthiness definitely, the oak is always integrated nice, and I'm just surprised that the acidity, uh, the acidity lifts up. This real dense red fruit. Interesting wine. Let's talk about some other Duro wines that they sent. Uh, <clears throat> this one right here. This is the Croquet, Sandra Tavares and Susan Esteban Duro 2014. This is typical Duro blend, Tariga Franca, Tariga Nacional. Interesting, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Tariga Nacional, as is Shireen. From what we understand, the, the grapes are really small. It's really a fickle grape, so, you know, hard to work with, but it produces great wines. Those are grapes that are traditionally in port wine. This was just extremely nice. A little bit young, but we had to drink it. We don't have a cellar here, so uh, really nice stuff. All these wines will be in it. All the tasting notes of these wines will be an article that I'll post below, too. This is probably the Duro wine that uh, disappointed us the most. This is... Let me see if I can get the right. The Pocas Valle de Cavales, 2005. Torriga Nacional, Torriga Franca, Tinta Roriz, which is also known as Tempranillo, and Tinta Barroca. Now, <clears throat> uh, this wine was quite decisive because at 05 when you tasted it, if you didn't know the age, everybody that tasted this with us was shocked that this was 12 years old. Uh, on the back end, the structure wasn't incredible, but I have to give it to it, the, the fruit, everything was really nice, and the wine tasted, I mean, it tasted maybe four or five years old, not 12 years old, so I was impressed with that. Let's see what else they sent us. This is a wine I was so disappointed that we opened it. This is the first wine in the pack we opened, and it was corked. This is the MLB Dow, Tariga Nacional, Alfrochero, Jean, and Baga. 2013. Now, I really like the wines from Dow. South, it's the south of the Duro a little bit. These wines for me are always extremely minerally, and I was so disappointed that this was corked. It was corked really bad. I just put it in my mouth a little bit. I knew it was corked when we smelled it. I put it in my mouth because I wanted to feel the texture. The texture felt incredible. It's just obviously the corked flavors didn't come out the best, so I was actually quite, quite sad. Uh, let's talk about some other interesting stuff here. This I brought to a tasting of, a high-end tasting, and people were really impressed. This is the Quinta Palada, Palada Dao from 2003. This is Tariga Nacional and a field blend of a bunch of odd grapes. This was pretty 
darn good. One guy told me this is one of his favorite wines uh, that he's had in the recent years. Again, 2003, something about the fruit here, the winemaking, that it tasted a heck of a lot younger than 14 years old. Uh, the tertiary notes were nice. It had a, a little bit of leather, some tobacco, some tomato, tomato, which I like quite a bit. The red fruit, though, was still really, really to the forefront. And this was just a nice wine. I was a big fan of this. Uh, <clears throat> another wine we have here, this is the Sidonia de Sousa Bajada, Reserva Tinto 2012. Now, Bajada is an interesting wine. It's made from the Baga grape. And these grapes are tannic. This is 2012. It was a little bit too young. Baga, to me, also gives off these real interesting kind of pine needle notes. Um, funny story. We have tasted some old Baga before. Some that are over 20 years old. They were phenomenal once they developed. The first time we went to Portugal a few years ago, we were at a wine bar, and I ordered a, a Baga, and it was so funny. Our server was hilarious. He looked at me and said, be careful with Bajada now. <laughs> so, yeah, these wines are difficult to drink sometimes when they're young because of the how tannic they are. Whew, the last one that we haven't drank yet, and I'm so excited. This is the Wine and Soul Pita's Character Duro from 2014. 49-year-old vines. I think this is, I do not know the exact blend. I'll have to put it in the article. I do know that this is a special edition wine. These wines are still foot trodden when they crush the grapes in old uh, kind of cement lagar. So I'm really excited to try this. This should be a treat. Woo! If you want the tasting notes for all of these wines, like I said, we, we will have them in a tasting article. But Portugal is a really interesting place. It's a place when you go there, Wine is so affordable because it's really a part of everyday life. And on top of that, I think it's pretty darn hard to find bad red wine there. Uh, you know, maybe some stuff at the top end is... I think you can find great value. What I saw there in between the 5 euro to the 20 euro range, what was 20 euro and above, because there are wines at that price. I didn't see a huge difference between the ones that were in the 20 euro range. But... Overall, great stuff, great country, and we hope to be back soon. Woo! Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. I will see you at the next episode.